Hello, my name is Henrietta West and I make comics. As you can see, I make actually very French inspired comics in the style you might call Clairlinia. And uh, I make this on an iPad. But I thought, how about we go back to the roots and start making it on paper again. I love paper. I love pencils. I love all that. So I was wondering, how about ante it up a bit also by making it a challenge, making one panel at a time with no absolutely no kind of plan or manuscript or anything. Uh, so one panel at a time and we'll see where it leads us. That could be extremely interesting to see. And in case you're wondering about my accent, yes, I'm not American, I'm not British, I'm not anything with the English language really. I am Danish, so my accent will be funny. Feel free to laugh at me. But anyway, let's get started. So, this is a ruler. I suppose most of you already know a ruler. What's good about this ruler is that if you place it on the paper, it's automatically in 90% of an angle. So what you can do with that is you can make some lines just to indicate where the frames might be. You can choose to disregard those lines, but at least you have a little bit that can lead the way in terms of where do you want your frame. And I intend to make these frames freehand. So, just a couple of lines. That does not mean that the frames will be thus distributed. Just means I have something to lead the way. Right, so the first panel, very first panel in a story, should not only get the reader's attention, it should also show the reader where we are and a little bit, little bit about what's going on. So let's make a really big panel. It could be half the paper and I'm just using the standard dimension A4 paper and uh, make it a half one. Oh, and do remember that if you make it outside the paper, then that will, in the end result, be cut off when you have it published and printed in a professional manner. Just a thing to remember. So if you want a margin of some sort, it should be a margin with plenty of space for not going over the, the edge, in case you don't want that. In this case, I so want to go over the edge. Let's go do it. So, like I said, half a page. So let's do something about those lines I just made. Just take out two of them. That's fine. And then that will be my, my leading edge here. And underneath will be further down will be other panels when I get to them. But the first one. So what do I feel like today? I feel like some grim um, city view. Uh, perhaps this person is sitting on some stairs leading up to a door. And with a, a road going that way or a street. So basically that's what I'm doing, trying to make it look a bit um, dark. So what's dark when it comes to, to cities? Well, it could be um, a tall chimney could let out a lot of smoke, not very healthy smoke, sort of dystopian feeling perhaps. Could also be something old here, like a tower with a spike. Also, when making a picture like this, don't forget the foreground. This is the background, this is the middle ground. What about the foreground? Well, I'm thinking how about cat? 
looking at whatever's going on here. And perhaps it's sitting on a trash can or a trash container, something like that. So that's our foreground. And let's finish that one as well. And let's have our, could be our protagonist, could be someone else. I have no idea yet. That is the point of this exercise. Maybe there's a bottle here. Maybe someone is walking there. Oh, and of course, it'll be dark, right? So, there. Maybe I'll slant that a bit more. There and there. Could be something here. And going to the edge, remember that? That's where the fun starts. And there could be a car right here. Another one here. When it comes to um, perspective, don't be too hard on yourself if you're making something like that. It is, after all, freehand. And uh, not only that, uh, it's also very sketchy and that's the whole point. That is so funny. Let's see, we've got some more chimney thing going on here. That's it. Oh, and let's not forget to finish off the cat, the kitty cat. Of course, it's absolutely fine to use the eraser sometimes. I will have to remove these sketchy lines anyway, eventually. And how about someone leaving? Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted him to have his hands in his pocket. There you are. Okay. I actually need no, I don't need any more than that, come to think of it. Um, I now have the essentials and I can make up the rest of it as I ink it. Now, for inking, I have two that I might use here. I have this regular one that says 0 0.4, if you can see that. And I have a brush pen right here. Basically the same stuff. What's important here is that Keep it waterproof. This is allegedly waterproof. Keep it waterproof because even if you start out by wanting to make a black and white uh, comic book, you might change your mind. And um, if you want to, like I do, if you want to put color on the absolute originals that these will be, then you absolutely need it waterproof. Of course, I, what I could do, I could scan it, uh, then I could put some color on in an iPad, but that would defy the purpose of this exercise where we are making it all analog, right? I could also make a copy of it and uh, put it on very good paper for, for coloring and do that, but I don't have the means to do that, so let's just, you know, ruin the original once it's done. <laughs> Okay, so let's try this, all you have to do really, and uh, of course before you do something like this you have been thinking what kind of uh, um, what kind of style you want it in, and uh, it's important to have that in mind when you start drawing. I'm thinking I like it pretty much the way I've done it in my sketch, so not changing that really. What I am doing here is adding a bit of detail. Uh, 
And I'm thinking also that I'll make this door opening a bit more narrow. Thing is, once you start drawing, you can easily just make amend, uh, amend where, you, where it needs to be amended if you're doing it in this haphazard, very sketchy way. And here's our guy sitting again. He's now a bit smaller than that. And once you draw him, you immediately start um, thinking about who is he? What's he doing there? Why is he looking so down the mouth? What's his problem? What's his story? And that story is exactly what we are going to disclose over these couple of weeks. I don't know how many times I'm going to make an update of this, but it shall be interesting to see what this guy is about. And I can hear you almost saying, but you know that already, right? You're the artist. No, I don't know already. That's the point with making an exercise like this. I have no idea. I absolutely love it, because this way I am actually reading my own comic book. So that's absolutely brilliant in my mind. Now you will see me um, finishing this this drawing but you if I do decide in the end to add some colour I will do that in the end meaning when I'm done with all the panels. But we'll see. We might I might not. I might not give it any colour. Shall be interesting to see what I feel like and what the story feels like. I mean it's pretty obvious by now, I'm guessing, that most of you can see this, that I will let the story decide, not me. I'll let the story decide. And let's also ink these cars. They're not very pretty, but they all look like cars anyway. Usually when I um, draw cars in my comic books on an iPad, I do get some reference material. But another thing about this one is I don't want to use reference material in this story at all. Shall be interesting to see how I meet that challenge. Okay, so, and that's the point about these lines that I drew in the beginning, that if I do that, I know approximately what would be a straight line over the paper. And here's the other guy, does not look very cheerful either and uh, while you're drawing this you can sort of start thinking so where are we what what's the season is that autumn or is it winter or if it's winter and there's no snow maybe that's in your regular european city or somewhere else now the cat in the foreground I like it to have a more prominent uh, line. There you go. That will make the foreground stand up a bit more when you're using a thick line like this. Also on um, the trash container it's sitting on. And I wouldn't mind giving it a bit of detail. I might even add a uh, onomatopoeticon. For those of you who know, uh, you know exactly what I'm about to do, but for those of you who do not know what that is, that is a sound word. Let's have a look at that. It could be...
It could be meow. It could either cover a drawing or it could be behind a drawing. Now I've chosen this. I think it goes well with the rest of it. Try to think of interesting details that I might actually give us a clue as to where we are, for instance, in the United States. These cobblestones are very tall, whereas in the, most of Europe they're not, they're very low. So, um, so there. And more depressing figures here. Very well. Now I could make all of this black, but um, would I do that if I decided to put color on it all in the end? I don't know. Those are the things I have to figure out while I'm drawing it. At least if I am to live up to my own rules, that I will not go back and correct this drawing after it's done. So, and there's the cat. I wonder, should we make it a stripy cat? I think perhaps we should. So, um, when you decide to give a cat a pattern in its coat. <laughs> you have to remember what that pattern looks like, right? I've had one cat, I think it was a calico cat, and so I'm not really that well versed when it comes to stripy cats, but it'll be fine. Sound effects. Here we go, sound effects. Now, funny little details like um, maybe there's a uh, banana peel right here. Now, he's not stepping in it because that's not in his line, but there could also be uh, the remains of a an apple there. All right. Okay. Okay, so what happened to my idea of the bottle? I haven't forgotten it. There you go. Now what happened to this guy? Did he forget his keys or is he stone drunk or what the hell happened, huh? How about giving the walls a bit of structure? Also, just to make it even more desolate, uh, make it so that only some of the bricks can be seen. There you go. There you go. When it comes to colouring, I can, if I decide to colour it, I can decide on... 
And this is where the camera gave up on me. So, you did not see the last minute of the drawing, but I can show you this. This is when it was all done. And I guarantee you, I promise you, that I did not go back and do something about it. Because I actually thought this bleeding camera was still recording. Anyway, I hope to see you next time when hopefully I'll make another panel. Let's try to make that shorter so the camera won't give up on me. I hope so anyway. And I also hope that you will follow and see what I'm doing and uh, see what I come up with. See what happens. Thank you for watching.